Hi, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp, and welcome to another video in this series Advanced Development in Grasshopper, where what I would like to teach you is how to script simple Grasshopper components using simple geometry types. So what we're going to build here together is, for example, a component that creates a point in three-dimensional space just by taking three um, just by taking three numbers, and you can see that the code is going to be very simple. It's more about using and learning how to use construct data types that are coming from the Rhino Common Core library. All right, I'm going to teach you how to deconstruct a point into its components. I'm going to teach you how to create a line between two points, for example. I'm going to teach you perhaps more complex, slightly more complex topics, so how to find a point that is along a particular point on the line. We're going to also create vectors between two points we're going to construct them and we're going to create planes on a particular origin and with two vectors as their main orientation. Again, this is going to be very simple applications of the Rhino Common Library to create geometry types. My hope here is to introduce you slowly to the topic. We will see more advanced examples further down in this series. Okay, so let's take a look at points, vectors, planes and lines how to create them from scratch. Let's get started. We're going to start by probably the simplest component that I can think of geometry wise, which is going to be creating a point in three dimensions. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my um, C sharp script component. And then I am going to add an additional input here. And very conveniently, they're already named x, y and c, which it feels like the kind of name that I would give to the inputs of a of a component that I want to create, taken as inputs three numbers. All right. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I always need to remember that I need to type the inputs, right. So I'm going to say the type of x needs to be a double because it's going to be a number, the type of y is going to be a number a double and the type of c is also going to be a double. All right. So now I have a component that can take three numbers. Let me actually give it three numbers. So for example, um, actually, I think I want decimal parts. So I'm going to double click and say 10.000. And then I'm going to copy and paste this three times and give it some values here. And my OCD doesn't let me keep those that way. So now I have the inputs. All right, I'm going to rename the output. I'm going to call it P because it feels like it's a point, right? And then I'm going to double click here and I can see that my inputs look correct. So I have x, y, c as doubles and the object, the output is p. All right. So as we typically do, I'm going to write here my algorithm and then I'm going to output here the outputs. All right. What is my algorithm going to be? Well, I just want to create a point from three numbers. So that's going to be super easy. And if you remember, we're going to go back to Rhino, the, the documentation, we're going to scroll all the way down to structs to find all the types of points that I can create. The most common one is going to be point 3D, not for three dimensions, but as I explained before, for three double point, double precision point values. So three numbers with a lot of decimal uh, precision, right? So, and you can see that I have the constructors here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So I'm going to create, I'm going to define a new variable of the type point 3D. So I'm going to type point 3D P and that's going to be a new object. And you can see how IntelliSense is already giving me a suggestion. Oh, I think you want to create a point 3D. So, and you can see that here I get, oops, all right. So here I used to, I have um, a suggestion and some helper text. So I'm going to hit enter, I'm going to open. And you can see that as I already I'm already getting suggestions that are coming from Rhino common. You can see that the constructor here has five overloads, you can see the one of five note here. And if I press the arrow down, you can see how it's telling me all the different ways I can create a point 3d from three doubles like here, from a vector, which means probably copying the x, y, c from that vector from a point 3f point. So another point with less precision from another 3d point, a point with the same position so as a copy or from a point 4d. Can we create points in four dimensions? Pooh, right. So 
I'm just going to stick to X, Y, C, and I'm going to use X, Y, and C, which just happen to be the names of the three inputs that I have here in my component. All right. So this component, this variable P, already has an object of the type point 3D. And for the output, I can say uppercase P. Remember that C sharp is case sensitive. So uppercase and lowercase make a difference. So the output P, the output of the component, is going to be equal to the lowercase p variable that I design in my algorithm. If I click play, you can see that everything works fine. All right. And that here, I now have a point in three dimensional space. I can make sure that this is the point that I just created here by putting a panel. And then you can see that now as I move my sliders, I have this point in 3D. So basically what I have done is I have just recreated the construct point co component. In the construct point, the code that is running inside is exactly identical to what I just wrote here. Okay. Cool. So, well, if we do deconstruct the construct point, can we deconstruct a point? Can we take a point and figure out the X, Y, Z coordinates of that point? Of course we can. It's going to be super simple. So let's do that. Uh, but before, I'm going to write here construct point 3D, and I'm going to use the paint bucket so that I have here my annotation. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a C sharp component and this one, I'm going to do the opposite. So what I want is to take a point. So I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to remove inputs, I'm going to rename this to uppercase P. Okay. And then remember, I have to type it. So in this case, the input is not going to be a number anymore. So now here we're coming to an interesting part. The input is not going to be a number or a primitive type. It's going to be a complex type, or it's going to be one of those Rhino common types that we have in the geometry kernel. And you can see that also very conveniently, oh, my head is on the way. You can see that very conveniently, these ones are the simpler types that I described before, the structs, okay? Whereas one totally in the middle, right? Whereas these ones are the more, the more complex ones. So that would be, that would be, oh, I'm making it worse. Okay, hold on, that would be, all right, so that's going to be line, circle. Actually, those are also structs. So I'm not sure that I'm doing a good, a good case here. Curves, surface, B-reps, whatever meshes, those are the more complex data types, if you will. Okay, so what are we going to do now? We need to make sure that this was point 3D. Okay, so we're going to set that up. And the outputs are going to be the X, Y, Z coordinates. So we need to change this to three outputs. This is going to be uppercase X, uppercase Y, and uppercase C. And I'm choosing uppercase just because to be, to keep, um, to keep symmetry with the vanilla grasshopper components. And then I'm going to plug a few panels right here. So I'm going to plug a panel here, another, and then I'm going to plug another panel here, X, Y, and C. All right. Okay, so now if I plug this point, you can see that nothing happens, obviously, because this component has absolutely no code inside of it. So we need to fill in the code, but at least the structure is already in place. You can see that the argument of the function P is now of the type point 3D, and we have three outputs, X, Y, and C. So let's just do this. And for this one, I'm actually not going to write anything as an algorithm because we can just simply output all this information right away. So for example, I can say X is going to be equal to whatever. What you can see is that because the object P, the variable P is of the type point 3D, when I hit the dot accessor, what I can see is that now the autocomplete is telling me, is popping a bunch of the methods and the properties that are available inside of point 3D objects. So as I was saying before, I can take, I can go per points, I can calculate the distance, I can interpolate points, which is the same thing as you would find here. You see, you can see the distance too, you can see interpolation, right? You can also see that we have the X, Y, and Z properties. Those will be here, so 
you can see that if I scroll down, I have the X, Y, and Z properties, and it just gives me a helper text to understand what's going on. So it turns out that this is very helpful. This autocomplete is very helpful to try to see what is inside particular geometry types. So X is going to be the property that tells me the X coordinate of any particular point. So I want to output in the X output, so that's this one. What I want to output is the value of the X property that lives inside of the point object P, all right? And similarly, I'm just going to do P Y and C is going to be P dot C, okay? I'm going to press this and as I do, you can see that now this component is outputting in the output the three numerical values for that for this point. And if I change the input values, you can see that these inputs are changing, all right? And that the values are updating correspondingly. All right, so now I have just created the deconstruct point that lives inside of Rhino, inside of gra Vanilla Grasshopper. Okay, beautiful. So we have construct and we have deconstruct. What else? All right. So that's great. What is the next thing that we can probably implement as an example here? How about creating a line between two points now? I mean, that sounds like a next straightforward step. So what is the original component for this? The original component, I think it looks something like this, line between points A and B. So we're going to try to mimic this, okay? And we're also going to do it already from our point here. So we have I'm going to construct two different points, okay? So this is going to be one point and this is going to be the other point, all right? And uh, they are separate in three-dimensional space. And I'm going to turn this off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create a line between these two points. So I'm going to create a component that creates lines between two points. I'm going to say the input is, needs to be called A. I'm going to do uppercase A. The other input is going to be called uppercase B. And remember, I need to type them. This is very important. I forget all the time, okay? So I'm going to right click on A, type hint, and I'm going to choose line. No, I'm going to choose point 3D as an input. And the other input is also going to be a point 3D object. And the output, I'm going to rename it as L. And remember, outputs don't need to be typed because they are generic types for design reasons that we don't really need to get to in here, okay? Beautiful. So I have now, I have the component that generates a line between two points. So now let's write some code in here. So also super, super straightforward algorithm and then outputs. So I'm going to say, I'm going to create an object of the type line. How do I know that that's the type that is called line? Because if I scroll in the documentation, you can see that here, there's a thing called line and that I can create a line from two points, from a point and a vector, from a point and a vector and a double, from six numbers. I'm going to see that. And I can see that lines have the from point, the to point, the coordinates of each one of them. You can find the closest point. You can flip the line. There's a lot of stuff we can do. We're gonna do a couple of examples here. So for example, let's say I'm going to call the object lowercase line. And I'm going to say, this is going to be a new object of the type line. And as I open parentheses, the autocomplete gives me suggestions. Two points gives me a point and a span, point direction and length, or the six coordinates of the two points at the ends. In this case, I'm going to choose point from and point to, which are going to be point A that is coming from the input and point B that is also coming from the input. And then in the output, uppercase L is going to be equal to that line variable that I just created. Very simple, very clean, very straightforward. I'm going to do that. And right now I'm going to plug a panel here. Oh, wow, what just happened? Oopsies. <laughs> oh, I think I copy pasted a lot of stuff. Sorry, I'm going to copy paste this. You can see that there's an invalid line because nothing is happening and this, as I plug in the two points, you can see that I now have a line in three dimensions 
that if I change any of the original inputs, the line changes. So we have a line object. Woohoo! Line object, paint bucket. We have our own implementation of a line object. All right. Something else that could be interesting is can we find a point along the line? How does that sound? Let's do that because that's going to be more interesting because it's not just creating an object, it's creating an object using somebody else's function. All right. So I believe that is done here uh, in Vanilla Grasshopper with the point on curve, which is a little esoteric because it has this UI with a slider, whatever. We're going to do it a simpler way. We're going to create a C sharp script component that is going to take a line as an input. So that's going to be uppercase L and just uppercase because it, that's how Vanilla Grasshopper does it. And the type is going to be line. All right. And now the other input is going to be how far along the line we're going to get that point from. But we're not going to use Euclidean length. So we're not going to use real length. We're going to use parameter. All right. And as you know, parameter is that, um, is that property that tells us how far we are along a curve in relative terms. All right. So lines, for example, always start with a parameter zero and always end in a parameter one, no matter how long or how short they are in 3D space. So it's the proportional length along the line, if you will. So we're going to call that lowercase t. That is a very common way of representing the parameter of a curve. And this is going to be a number. So I'm going to choose double because it needs to be a number from zero to one. And then the output here is going to be P, which is going to be the point along that line. Let me choose here a slider that is going to be, for example, at 1.0. Okay. And I'm going to plug that in here and I'm going to plug this line as well. And then the output is going to be P, which I need to encode. Correct. So I'm going to double click here and now I have my inputs, the line L, parameter T and the point P. So algorithm and output. Okay. So how can we do this? Well, there's two ways we can do this. First, we can do it the manual way. So we can find the X, Y, Z coordinates of the points of the line. We can calculate their distance between them. We can factor those distances by the parameter and then we can recreate a new point in 3D. So that would be the manual way. And I believe I actually have a geometry gem somewhere where I did that. If that's the case, it will be popping somewhere here on the as a card or it will be in the description of this video. But since this is a little bit more about learning Rhino Common, so let's see if there's any functionality in Rhino Common that we can access to be able to figure that problem out. So what would be the way to do this? Well, we could hope we could use the intelligent suggestions to see if there's anything like that. Or we can take a look at documentation, which is always a probably a better approach, I would say. So if we go to the line structure and we look at the methods, so at the functions that are inside line objects, we can see that there is one here called point at, which if I click, it tells me that it evaluates the line at the specified parameter. All right. And then that the return type is going to be a point 3D object. This means that if I tell the line that I want to point at a particular parameter, it will return that point. So very nicely, I have some examples here that we could look at, etc. But I'm just going to do it myself. So what are we going to do? The algorithm is going to be point 3D uh, point 3D PT is going to be equal to a point that I'm going to generate from the line. So I'm going to say L, which is the line object that I'm reading from the input dot. And then I'm going to start scrolling all the methods, all the functionality. You can see this is everything that we have seen in the documentation. Here I have point at, which is evaluates the line at a specified parameter. I have point at, I open parentheses, it asks me for the parameter, so lowercase t. And the fact that this in the documentation is lowercase t, and the fact that this 
in the input is lowercase t as well. It's just a coincidence, but they don't have to have the same matching name. Okay. And then the output p is going to be equal to pt. Let's see if this works. If this works would mean that a point at parameter zero would be all the way at the beginning and a point at parameter one would be all the way at the end and a point at parameter 0 0.5 would be right at the center of the line. And what that means also is that if I modify any of the inputs, everything should be parametrically bound, correct? Beautiful. So it looks like we have been able to create a line, uh, a point at point at line. All right. So now with this, and actually, let me show you a trick. Lines have a domain that goes from zero to one, but that doesn't mean that we can only find points from zero to one. So if I actually change the domain of this from minus five to positive five, we can also just find a point that extends over the line outside the zero one domain of that line. It just does so proportionally to the length of the line. Correct? Beautiful. This is looking really cool. What is the next thing we're going to do? I think it's time for vectors, isn't it? Let's do it. So we're going to do, for example, we're going to do the simple vector from three components. And I mean, you're going to see that that is extremely, I'm actually going to copy the construct point and I'm going to turn this into construct vector because I'm going to use the same X, Y, Z inputs. The output is going to be B in this case. And what I'm going to do here is that you're going to see that the, I'm going to remove the algorithm here and the algorithm here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a vector 3D object called lowercase v. And that's going to be a new vector 3D from x, y, z components. So x, y, and z. And then v is going to be equal, the output is going to be equal to that variable lowercase v that we just generated. As I do that, you can see that now I have this vector and you can see that the output actually is such a vector. Okay. And um, if we actually want to visualize this, we can use the vector display component to just say, can I see this vector on can and can I just anchor it at the center? And then you can see that this would be the vector that I just created. Correct. However, this is a little boring. So how about we create, we actually create a vector from two points, just like we have created a line from those two points. So let me show you a couple of tricks here. So I'm going to create a C sharp script component, and this is going to be input is going to be a, the other input is going to be B, and I'm going to call this vector 2PT, 2PT and a bucket here. And then the output is going to be V, uppercase V. All right. Remember that I have to type the inputs. So this A is going to be of the type 0.3D and this B is going to be of the type 0.3D. Now I have the two points that I have created here. I'm going to plug them over and oopsies. I'm going to make a little bit of room for myself here and I'm going to plug here a panel. So I have the two points coming in and I want to create a vector between them. So there's a couple ways we can do this here. So I'm going to write the algorithm and I'm going to output the outputs here. There's a couple ways that I can do this. So the manual way would be to say, I'm going to take the coordinates of A, I'm going to take the coordinates of B, I'm going to subtract them. So the, co the X coordinate of B minus the coordinate of A to find the difference between them and then use those coordinates to create a vector between them. All right. So that would be the manual way, but we're trying to, um, we're trying to come up with more Rhino common ways of doing this. This is what I'm trying to teach you here. So I'm going to teach you, for example, a first way could be using some of the properties or some of the, I believe the constructor has Potent has the constructor has the possibility of doing this for you. So for example, I can say new vector 3D, but instead of X, Y, Z now, let me see if I can create it from two points. 
Well, it turns out that there's no option to create it from two points. But because I know that geometrically, a vector between two points is basically the subtraction of the coordinates of V minus the coordinates of A, I could do it manually, as I said before. I could say the difference between E is Vx minus Ax, and I could do that for dy, dc, and create a new vector with these components. But instead, Rhino Common actually gives me a way to operate with uh, components, uh, with uh, points directly. So for example, what I could do is I can, hold on, give me a second. Sorry, because I know that the meaning of creating a vector between two points is the difference between the coordinates, Rhino Common actually gives me a shortcut to making that happen. So it turns out that even though A and B are point 3D types, they're not numbers, what I can do is I can actually operate with them. So it turns out that in this case, the expression B as a point minus A as a point is a valid operation because Rhino Common has this thing called operator overloads, which means that it can, it gives me options to define what happens when I subtract two, um, when I subtract two points together. And it turns out that the result of this is a vector that goes from A to B because of the geometric meaning of this operation. With this, what I can do is I can now say that the output V is equal to that new variable that we just created. I'm going to say Rhino common operator over loads here. All right, let's see if that is true. I create a vector between these two points, but let me visualize it to make sure that it's correct. So I'm going to visualize the vector and I'm going to visualize it from the first point. And you can see that indeed this vector is going from A to V. And if I modify any of the points, you can see that indeed the relation stays correct. Beautiful. So how nice is this? This idea, the idea that I can subtract two things that are not numbers, again, is a special functionality that Rhino Common gives us and it's called operator overloads. All right. Wonderful. And last but not least, perhaps we want to create a plane out of uh, the origin point and two vectors. So let's just do that right away. So I'm going to construct a point here. I'm going to construct a point. I'm going to construct two vectors. I'm going to construct two vectors here. Okay, I'm going to delete all this stuff. And here I'm going to create so for example, this is the vector, this is the vector, this is the point. And I'm going to create here a C-sharp script that is going to take the origin, all right? And that's going to be of the type point 3D. It's going to take the X direction and that's going to be of the type vector 3D. And it's going to take a third input that is going to be of the type vector 3D as well. And then here, I'm going to output PL, which is going to be the plane. And I'm going to plug everything in here, the point, the vector, the other vector, and then inside, very similarly, in the algorithm, I'm going to say I'm going to create a plane object, PL, which is going to be a new plane, which takes another plane, I can take an origin and a normal. I can take an origin and the X, Y, C and the X, Y directions. I can take three points. I can take A, B, C and D. So I think for this one, I'm going to like the origin and the two vectors. So that's going to be O, the input, capital X, the input and capital Y, the input. And then the outputs is going to be P, L, uppercase. So that's the output is going to be equal to lowercase P, L. As I do that, you can see that I'm getting a plane that is here centered on this point, correct? And that has the orientation of these two vectors. So if I change X, you can see how the plane is rotating in 3D. And if I change Y, you can see the other point, correct? All right, so 
we can create primitives now. And I hope that this was useful to see the simple ways of how can we create basic geometry inside of C -sharp script components and access Rhino Common, which is the underlying geometry kernel for creation and for simple manipulation of geometry data types. What I would like to do now on the next video is to reinforce this idea and show you some more extended examples, uh, specifically for vector algebra, where we're going to be operating and doing things with vectors. Okay, so in the next video, which is going to be an exercise video, we're going to continue with the plugin that we're building, and we're going to create a few vector algebra components, and we're going to keep looking at different things that we can do with the vector 3D structure that comes with Rhino Common. All right. If you think we're good, you're welcome to skip to the next video where we're going to do advanced geometry scripting. Otherwise, I think the vector algebra will be super helpful. Okay. Thank you very much. If you like this video, maybe hit the button, maybe subscribe to the channel and see you on the next video, vector algebra exercise. Bye-bye.